This case of the Omicron variant was identified in a traveler from South Africa, but the second case in Minnesota does not appear to evolve, involve any sort of uh, a travel abroad. And tonight we've also learned that New York State has confirmed at least five cases of the Omicron variant. How concerning is all of this? Thank you for having me. I think this is, as expected, is pretty concerning. Uh, this is basically the tip of the iceberg, what we're detecting right now. And it's an indication that there is wide community transmission of Omicron already happening. Uh, I just read earlier that the case that was detected in Minnesota had attended a convention mm -hmm. in New York City, which tells us that, you know, there's probably widespread in the city more than what we have detected already, which is the nature of these coronaviruses. So help all of us understand, how do healthcare providers actually test for the Omicron variant? How possible is it that there are people who are just now testing positive for COVID that don't realize that actually what they have isn't the, the Delta variant, which is still 99% of cases, but is actually one of these new Omicron strains? Yeah, that's a great question. So basically our conventional testing, the PCR testing, that we have right now is able to detect the Omicron variant and all the coronavirus variants. After that, the testing is followed by genetic sequencing testing that's done in specialized labs and usually done by national public health labs and the CDC to identify the variants that are circulating in the community. And that's how we're able to define which variants are circulating in which community. So that's usually a two step process. The first step is that you go get tested at a regular health testing center. They do the PCR testing and after that, that test is sent to a specialized lab to do the genetic sequencing testing. And that's how we identify the variant. And just to follow up to that, Dr. Fadol, are all of the positive tests genetically sequenced or is it just a, a smaller sample of that so that it, it may in fact be more widespread than we realize? That's, that's a great question. And, and that varies quite a bit around the world. Uh, in some places, all the tests are genetically sequenced. In some places, uh, the surveillance is done for samples, random samples of these tests. Uh, and this is kind of what we ha happen in South Africa is that there is, they have some of the best genetic sequencing testing uh, in Africa and probably uh, equivalent to some of the rest of the world. And they were able to detect this much earlier than other places that were uh, detected the Omicron, even though it was circulating in Europe, for example, uh, for a while before it was detected there. Right. Um Tell us what data is still needed to understand whether current vaccines are really effective against this new variant. I think it's going to take us a while to know for sure, uh, but it's really reassuring that the cases that had Omicron and were fully vaccinated had mild symptoms. Mm -hmm. And that tells us that even though the vaccine might not prevent somebody from getting the virus, which we also have seen with Delta, but it does still prevent severe disease in these patients. So if we want to fight this virus, just like we did with the Delta variant, the solution is to get fully vaccinated. And the ultimate solution is to make sure you get your booster shot. That's really what mounts the antibody level to a level that prevents you from getting severe disease from these viruses. I'm, I'm wondering, Dr. Fado, what questions about Omicron have you been getting from your patients and what are you telling them? I've been getting a lot of questions. I got a question, a text today from, a, from my own daughter asking me if this is serious and if we need to worry about it. And, and people need to be concerned. I think we shouldn't undermine what's happening right now. The, and as I said earlier, this is the tip of the iceberg. And what we're seeing is probably an indication that Omicron, because it's highly transmissible, is gonna overcome Delta at some point, in, at least in some states, if not in the country as a whole. So people should be concerned. And this is a concern that should be not just for the U.S., it's for the international community. Mm -hmm. And the message here is that if we don't fight this vaccine, uh, sorry, this uh, virus as a pandemic, as it is, in the rest of the globe, these variants are going to keep emerging, and eventually they're going to make their way to our own backyard. Because this is, again, a pandemic. It involves the rest of the globe. Here we have a 71% vaccination rate, but we have to remember some parts of the globe have 5% vaccination rate or even less than that. And mm -hmm. that is a, basically a factory for more transmissible and more dangerous variants to emerge and eventually make their way here. Yes, and even here in the United States, there are still tens of millions of Americans who remain unvaccinated. And we are learning that Omicron appears to be two and a half times more likely to reinfect someone who previously had COVID and may have been counting on so-called natural immunity. So are you seeing any more patients getting vaccinated because of concerns about Omicron? 
I can't tell for sure if I'm seeing more people getting vaccinated, but, uh, but I'm definitely strengthening my message to my patients who are hesitant or who are questioning the validity of the vaccine. Like you said, we had many patients who thought natural immunity is going to be enough to overcome uh, infections. And we had seen reinfections happen in many patients. And now we're advising patients strongly to go ahead and get vaccinated. And we're advising those who are already vaccinated to make sure they go ahead and get their booster shots. Mm -hmm. And what other precautions do you recommend taking until we know more about this variant, especially as we're heading into the busy holiday season? Yeah, I mean, this is really the worst time that this could have emerged because I'm sure many people have already booked their travel. Many people have made plans to visit family and travel to areas in the country that now might have widespread of Omicron. So I think people need to go back to the early days of the COVID pandemic. We really shouldn't underestimate this uh, variant. We shouldn't underestimate the pandemic at all. People need to go back and practice all the measures that we knew were effective even before we had a vaccine. Social distancing was effective. Mask was effective. So we need to go back to those measures in addition to the excellent tool that we have right now, which is vaccination. So if you're not already vaccinated before the holiday, you still have plenty of time to go ahead and please get your first and second shot. And if you're already vaccinated, please make sure you get your booster shot. We cannot fight this with just hopeful and wishful thinking. We really need to take active measures to fight this pandemic. So appreciate hearing your thoughts, both as a mother and as a healthcare provider. Dr. Nada Fadil, thank you for joining me and thank you for all that you do. Thank you. The U.S. Senate has passed a short-term resolution to fund the government and prevent a shutdown. Congress had until Friday at midnight to pass.